This video is sponsored by DJI. When you hear the words commercial drone, what do you typically think of? I think most people will go right to the Matrice series, maybe the M300, or some people think of the Phantom 4 Pro Advanced. Now those drones have been the workhorses of the DJI Enterprise lineup for years, and they've been very successful, and they're still of great use today. But times are changing, and the professionals of today are changing as well. I think a lot of them are looking for three things, portability, efficiency, and ease of use. So allow me to introduce you to the newest addition to the DJI Enterprise lineup, the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Hi everyone, Russ here. Thanks for stopping by the channel to learn about the new Mavic 3 Enterprise series. Now, if you wanna to navigate to a specific topic in this video, there are timestamps in the video description to take you where you want to go. In this video, we're gonna get a first look at the Mavic 3 Enterprise Thermal. Now, I should tell you there are two versions. One is the Mavic 3 Enterprise, or M3E, and the other, which I have here, is the Mavic 3 Thermal, or we're gonna call it the M3T. Now I'll also compare it to the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced today. I'll show you the flight performance and the camera system of the M3T, and we'll take a quick look at the software, the Pilot 2 app on the RC Pro Enterprise controller. The Mavic 3 Enterprise series is the perfect marriage of convenience and performance, allowing today's everyday commercial drone pilot the opportunity to offer a variety of commercial aerial services and to do them quickly and efficiently. No longer do you need to be an employee of a large UAV operation or spend five figures on a capable commercial drone to be a professional drone pilot today. Plus, public safety organizations no longer need to pay exorbitant fees to service providers. For the price of a single search and rescue mission, they can have their very own drone that does everything they need it to. There it is. Holy smokes. That one's a lot smaller than the last one you bought <laughs> over here. Yep, it is. So this is like a smaller, kind of a smaller version of the, the M30. It doesn't have quite all the capabilities that I showed you on that one, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And then you can put all the uh, different attachments on top. So it's got a variety of attachments that are gonna be coming. So it's got the loudspeaker. So say you got a lost kid, you can let the kid know that you found them and to stay put or whatever. So. So that's pretty cool. And then you can have a spotlight, you can have all sorts of different attachments to put on top of it. So definitely an advancement over the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Remember I showed yep, you that yep. one last year? Yep. Um, so it's a step up from that one. Um, so, yeah. Yep. And I think that's probably what we would be looking at. Yeah, it's more reasonable for you. I think this drone is gonna make it, the technology more accessible for departments like yours. You know, most departments aren't going to spend 14, 15 grand on a drone, but they'll spend half of that on a drone. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I could probably fit that in my budget. Yeah, absolutely. So that's pretty cool. With its affordable price point, feature set, and portability, this drone is going to open up so many possibilities for smaller public safety teams like this one. Now, I'll get to the price point here in just a minute. I know you're waiting to hear it, but I will tell you one thing you're gonna be really, really surprised. The M3T is a foldable quadcopter that weighs 920 grams or just over two pounds. It can fly up to 19 meters per second or 43 miles per hour, but I actually got it up to 47 miles per hour and it's advertised to handle a 26 mile per hour wind, but it can handle much more than that. So one way that I like to check the wind tolerance of a drone is to see how it does with return to home. So right now I have the M3T at about 233 altitude. Let's check the wind. So right now we got 23 miles per hour sustained winds and 33 mile per hour gusts. So we're gonna hit the return to home button and see how it does. All right, not too bad. It's about, oh, maybe six to eight inches off, but as you can see, 22 miles per hour with the 32 mile per hour gusts. 
So it can tolerate the wind pretty good. I flew it yesterday in the wind. I just flew it against the wind. It was 37 mile per hour gusts at 250 feet. And I can't remember what the speed I got up to, but I'll put it up on the screen here. I turned it around, flew it with the wind. I got 47 miles per hour and it, it didn't even budge. I mean, those, it was super windy. I think when I landed, it had to be 40 miles per hour. You guys, that is unbelievable. It's like, a, it's like at least 35 miles per hour winds. That's returned to home. That's exactly where it took off from. So this drone can handle wind. Considering the conditions, I would not be hesitant to fly this thing in a 30 mile per hour wind at any time. It has an advertised flight time of 45 minutes in ideal conditions. All right, I just went through three batteries to see what kind of flight time I could get with the M3T. And the best time that I was able to get from 99% battery down to 8% battery with a 20 mile per hour wind, I just flew around randomly, you know, consistently. I didn't do anything crazy and I got just over 32 minutes of flight time. So even though it's not 45 minutes like they advertise, it is right in that 70 to 75% of advertised flight time for all other DJI drones. So although consistent, it's not great. The big thing is it's a huge improvement over the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advance. So, so I, think it's, I think it's pretty good, but I wish we could someday get that 45 minutes out of a drone. I tested the flight time also on two very windy days, like between 30 and 40 miles per hour, and I got 25 minutes and 29 minutes. So not too bad considering the conditions. The Mavic 3 Enterprise series also has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance that performs very much the same as the consumer grade Mavic 3. It does have a pass, which allows you to keep the drone moving while avoiding obstacles. All right, just wanna show you the difference between the braking obstacle avoidance and then turning it into a pass mode. So right now I have it set to break. If you go into the obstacle avoidance setting, you can see there break. Now here's the beauty of the Pilot 2 app. You can set the distance at which it will tell you that there's an obstacle ahead. And it, you can also change that distance to how far away before it will break. So I'm gonna dial that up a little bit. Let's put it on 12 feet before it will actually break. So it'll stop 12 feet in front of an object. And then also warning distance, you can adjust that. You know, maybe you need to want to get in a little bit closer to something if you're doing an inspection or something like that. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it at um, 26.4 feet. So let's back out of there. And let's just try to fly straight into these rocks right here. So I'm just gonna push the right stick straight ahead. And there you can see on the middle of the screen there, it's telling us, hey, there's something straight ahead. Then it turns red and then right there's where it's gonna stop, okay? I'm pushing the stick straight ahead forward, nothing is happening. So let's go ahead and back up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch it to avoid. Okay, so now it's on a pass. And we're gonna set that warning distance, we're gonna leave it the same, 26.4 feet. Let's exit out of there. Now let's see what happens. I'm gonna hit the record button here. I'm gonna see what happens when I fly straight into those rocks. Now watch what the Mavic 3 Thermal does. It goes above those rocks. That's what A-Pass is, okay? So you can see that if you're flying around some really tight areas, the Mavic 3 will avoid it. Let's just try to challenge it here a little bit. Let's fly over these evergreens here. Let me back up a little here so you guys can see, get in perspective. All right, so there we got some evergreens. Let's go right at the middle one and let's see how the M3T does flying in these in these trees. It should do okay. It should go right above it. Okay, it gets really, really close. Really raises my blood pressure, but it did work. So that's how the APAS system works. When the Mavic 3 was released last year, people were so excited to see that it had two cameras, a wide angle and a telezoom. Well, the M3T goes one step further and it adds a thermal camera three cameras on a drone that can literally fit in the palm of your hand. So here you're looking at the wide angle camera view. This camera has a half inch CMOS sensor that shoots 48 megapixel photos and records up to 4K 30 video. It has 84 degrees field of view and a fixed aperture of f2.8. Now this camera is not meant for capturing stunning landscapes or creating engaging content. It is designed for specific commercial work for today's inspection professionals and public safety teams. Now, if you want a camera for doing things like surveying or mapping or high resolution photos, then I would take a look at the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the one that comes without the thermal camera. So the zoom camera or the telecamera is a 58X hybrid zoom camera 
that also has a half inch sensor and it captures 12 megapixel photos and records 4K 30 video. It has a field of view of 15 degrees and a fixed aperture of f4.4. Honestly, I think this will be the most utilized camera on this drone because it's just so useful for getting up close and personal without putting your drone at risk or without disturbing people or animals in the area that you may be surveying. The zoom on the camera is so impressive. Let me just show you here. So right now it's got no zoom on it. It's got a 1x and you can zoom by either using the slider with your thumb over here on the right hand side or you can just tap on the plus and the minus. So let's tap. That's going to give us a 2x. We're going to zoom in onto the um, soccer game right now. There is 4x. There's 7x and that's a great view of great soccer team right there. There's 14x. Okay, as I was editing this video and I was looking at that footage from the soccer field and I was looking at the zoom camera, I'm like, you know what, that looks really grainy. It does not look good at all. And that's because earlier in the day I was shooting in manual mode and of course the ISO was super high, so it was really grainy. So I wanted to show you guys what the zoom camera looks like when it's actually looking good. So here I'm shooting in auto mode, I zoom into 2x and there's a four times zoom, seven times zoom, 14x. I think this looks wonderful for a 14x zoom uh, and then zoom it into 28x and then it's starting to break apart then it's really getting a little bit muddled there i did a little wave so you could see me and then uh zoom it into 56 there it's really starting to break apart so 56 isn't something i would use a whole lot but i definitely think you could get by with that 14 times zoom on this camera i really really enjoy the zoom camera i just can't tell you enough the thermal camera on the M3T has a resolution of 640 by 512 and it records at 30 frames per second. It has a 61 degree field of view and a 28x digital zoom. It has 10 different color palettes. I'll just give you an idea of what they are here. Uh, for the most part, you're going to be using black hot or white hot for most situations, but you know, every situation has a different need for color palettes. And uh, I'll go through these more when I go through the software in my next video on the M3T. But this camera can measure temperatures ranging from negative 20 to 500 degrees Celsius or negative 4 to 932 degrees Fahrenheit. And one of my favorite features with this camera and with this drone is the side by side. So right now you'll see the thermal view on the screen. If I hit SBS, that's going to give us a side by side view. We got the thermal on your left and we got the zoom camera on your right. And you can go ahead and zoom in. So we're going to zoom in with that zoom camera and get a better look and see, hey, maybe I see something there. Maybe I see a heat signature. I want to get a closer look. I'm going to use that zoom camera to get in a little bit closer and, and see what I see. Now you can also zoom in the infrared. So we're going to click on that IR down there. That's going to give us 4X. There's 7X, 14X. That's still enough to tell if there's someone walking down there, if there's heat down there. Oops, I'm going to go ahead and lower the drone right now, I do see aircraft in the area, so I'm going to go ahead and do that just to make sure that we stay safe. All right, there we go. Looks like the airspace is clear again, so let's get back up to the same altitude. About So there you can see some heat signatures. You can tell that there's a warm body there, and uh, you know even at 14x, that infrared camera is great. To, uh, to zoom all the way back out with the infrared, you just hold on that IR. That's going to bring you back out. So. So yeah, I love the side-by-side. -side. I think that's so useful and it can be really critical for like search and rescue or maybe for law enforcement or someone like that. Um, but it's also useful for like critical infrastructure or even rooftop expect inspection just to get a closer look. The Mavic 3 Enterprise is equipped with O3 Enterprise transmission, which has a maximum transmission distance of 15 kilometers in perfect conditions. Now, you'll never see a range test on this channel, but I can assure you that the signal transmission strength performs well beyond what is necessary for most commercial applications. In April of 2021, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced was released, and it is still a very capable solution for small commercial operators or public safety organizations. So what makes the M3T so much better? Well, there are quite a few features, but here are some of the major ones. First, I think the most important upgrade is flight time. 14 minutes more advertised flight time. That's 50% more. And having that extended flight time is critical, especially in a search and rescue scenario. Next, and probably most obvious, is a triple camera system instead of just two. The wide angle, the telelens, and the thermal camera provide opportunities to do much more. 
For the individual commercial drone pilot, this multi-camera system means that they can offer a wider variety of services and grow their business. Next is the global navigation system. The M2EA has just GPS and GLONASS, while the Mavic 3 Enterprise uses GPS, Galileo, and Beidou. Plus, with the RTK module, it adds that fourth system of GLONASS. More stable, more accurate, and that's key for so many use cases. Next, moving from OcuSync 2.0 to O3 Enterprise transmission, the best way that I can describe it, the difference is like going from dial-up internet to one gig fiber optic. No more lost signals, which is crucial for pretty much any commercial application. Do those of you under 30 years old even know what the words dial-up mean? <laughs> and finally, the charging time. It takes 90 minutes to charge the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced 3850 milliamp hour battery. With the 100 watt DJI charger, you can charge the Mavic 3 Enterprise 5500 milliamp hour battery to 90% in just 47 minutes and fully charge it in 69 minutes. Also, you can charge both the drone and the RC Pro Enterprise controller at the same time with that 100 watt charger. Again, time is critical and the faster you can charge the batteries, the better. The RC Pro Enterprise controller has a 1000 nit brightness screen that has a three hour battery life. It can be used in temperatures from 14 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It has 64 gigs of internal memory and a micro SD card slot for expansion and a mini HDMI port. The Pilot 2 app is so powerful and intuitive. It's easily navigated and it gives you all of the important information you need right on the screen. Commercial aerial services are advancing. And the best part is that the technology is advancing in a way that allows individual pilots and smaller teams to compete with the larger corporations. Drones like the Mavic 3 Enterprise series are the future due to the fact that there is much lower overhead and incredible mobility and efficiency. Now, if you wanna learn more about the Mavic 3 Enterprise series, there will be a link in the video description. Oh, and I bet you thought I forgot. What is the pricing of these new Enterprise drones and all of the accessories? I'll put them right up here on the screen. I don't know about you, but I am really surprised at these price points. I thought they would be much higher. It's just another sign that DJI is really targeting smaller providers, and that makes me very excited. So hit the like button, that thumbs up button if you got anything of value today. I really do appreciate that. Also, I appreciate you being here and watching this video because I know that you have a lot of choices when you watch your videos, so thank you so much. If you do enjoy my content, consider subscribing. Have a wonderful day, and as always, fly safe and fly smart. Get a little closer, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so that's the loudspeaker.